Sunshine Valley Farm family, welcome back to another episode of The Farm. If you're new here, you are most welcome. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already and also turn your notification bells not to miss out on any episodes of The Farm. And of course, to all our returning subscribers, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being part of the family and also loving Value Farm. Guys, we love you so much. So today we are back at the farm. It's as bright as you can see. The sun is just out, very hot yet it's a rainy season. This is a different season and of course we want to really update you guys on what is actually happening at the farm and what is new so that you guys can be, you know, with us in the same pace. You can be able to follow our journey at Value Farm. So where we are standing here, it is where I showed you guys some time back about the grasses that we are planting for the animals and where I'm standing here, we have already started even harvesting the grass that we planted. You remember the time that we, we came here, the grass was just very small. It was little, it was just growing up, but it is harvest time. So this other side, we have the sugar graze, as you can see, it is already grown. We've already cut some of them for, for the goats. Most of you may be wondering what we use the grass for. We use the grass for the animals, like the goats, the sheep. We have the sugar graze on this section here. It is already grown. I'm super excited. We are already harvesting it. And of course, we are chopping for our animals. Then this other side, we also have the, um, the what? The sun hem. The sun hem is beautiful, guys. I really love this sun hem here. It is grown so well, and it's time to really harvest. In fact, our, my colleagues already started harvesting this part as well. And by today, we are supposed to be clearing all this because it's really ready. If we leave it any longer, it's going to wilt and it's going to be bad for the animals. So we have to harvest it as soon as possible. Give it to our exotic goats, give it to the sheep, give it to the cows as well. So this is what it is on this side. Harvest time is here. I'm super excited to share with you guys. And of course, there's a lot that we need to really show you guys. So this is like a farm tour that we are going to show you guys the other grasses, the other crops that we planted and anything really interesting about the farm and anything interesting about Value Farm today. Let's go guys so that we can show you the other section so that you can see the crops like the sweet potatoes, the cassava. Oh my God, I'm just getting super excited. Guys, let me go and show you guys so that you can see actually how they are really progressing because there's good progress here for the few months that you've not really got an update about the farm. Let's go! So this other section guys we have more sweet potatoes here. Yeah these are the sweet potatoes guys for the staff because we really want to cut the cost of feeding and also, you know, spending so much on the feeds because we have at least the land that we can grow, the sweet potatoes. So this is a section of it that we really told them to dig and it's doing so well so far. The rains have been here. That's why you see them looking very, very nice. So this is the part for the sweet potatoes. Let's go to the other section as well of the farm. Come along with me. So guys, we are right here in the maize. Why we planted this maize is to really cut costs for the feeds, most especially for the pigs, because the high prices for the feeds is just crazy at the moment. So we planted the maize so that we can definitely harvest our own so that we can always take to the mill and also feed the pigs. So this is a way of cutting costs. So if a farmer out there and you really want to not get frustrated with feeding the pigs, because pigs really eat so you need to really have your maize in stock that's where we make the maize brand so if you have your maize brand in stock if you plant your maize well in advance in all seasons as long as it's available trust me you're not going to suffer you're going to enjoy pig farming so this is part of the section that we planted our maize but next season we definitely want to also plant more acres of maize so that we can you know Cut the real costs for the for the pigs so that we don't really suffer so much going to the mills that the prices are really high it's not even available so all those problems should be really cut as long as you're a farmer so guys let me just show you guys here so that we can go to a different section and see what's happening at value farm come along
So guys, this maize is almost ready for harvest as well. I think we are remaining with a few weeks, then we shall start harvesting, as you can see. Then this other section, the conference is right there. Can you see in the camera? You can't see. So my beautiful people, we are here, of course with the sweet potatoes again. I know most of you might be wondering, why are you planting so much of the sweet potatoes? You know, we need to feed and the people have to eat all the time. Food security is really key as long as you have your own food. You're not going to suffer with buying food all the time, going to the market where the prices are really so high. So this section here, we already dug our, our mounts for the sweet potatoes. We have the leaves that, that side that we are going to be planting today. The good thing about this, it is still rainy season and we are going to definitely, you know, have a good harvest most probably. So. Let's just keep our fingers crossed so that our sweet potatoes grow and we harvest them and we share with you guys when you come to Value Farm, when you come for training, we serve you some sweet potatoes for the farm. Yes, so guys, let's go to a different section so that we can see other things, other stuff that are really happening here. Let's come, let's go with us. So guys, we are right here at the alfalfa. Guys, we've harvested this alfalfa so many times. I don't know how many times we've really harvested, but it regrows. As you can see, the last time I think we were here, it was cut a little bit, but it's already growing up. So what we normally do, we come here, do the weeding, make sure it doesn't have so many weeds, and we keep cutting, taking this for the goats. This is like God sent. It's a server to value farm because this is really good protein for the animals. So guys, let me show you guys another part. So guys, we also have here the Croris Guyana. This has been harvested before, but it is growing up again. This was just a sample. This was a sample that we did here in this section, but it really shows us that it can really grow in this section. So that is it for this part. So guys, we are here in the vegetable garden. I know most of you didn't really see this part of the farm, but we have our vegetables. We have the skooma where I am here. We've already eaten most of it and this is for the stuff. And of course we are also taking home as well. So this is really very nice. This is a very good idea for a farmer out there in case you really want to feed your stuff. You want to also take something back home. It's really so nice when you come to your farm and there's something that you take back home with you. So when we, whenever we come to the farm and we, we're going back to Kampala, we are going back home, we get some skooma here, we get some eggs here, we get some cassava, we get some sweet potatoes. It's the beauty of farming. You know, you don't spend so much in food as well. So this other section here, guys, this is the skooma. I don't know what you guys call it in wherever you're watching this video from, but this is the skooma. It is very, very delicious. Then we also have the spinach. We have cabbage that I will definitely share with you guys that we planted. We planted just a sample. Remember, this is just newly acquired land and we didn't do so much before here. So we're sampling to see whether it can work, whether it cannot. So surprisingly, the skooma has really worked so well here it is growing perfectly so we shall definitely be having skooma planted in other sections as well of the farm and when you come to value farm you definitely see the sections for the for the crops for the vegetables for the feeds for the grasses all that will be partitioned in a in a proper manner that's what i should really say so this is just a sample but let me take you guys to the other side so that we can see other parts yeah let's go guys So guys, we are right here, more skooma right here guys, then we have cabbages. Oh my god, I'm so happy there's cabbage right here. Hey! <laughs> oh my god, I'm super excited. So this is also just a sample of the cabbages that we have. Yes, super amazing. Then we have that other section guys, we have the um, eggplants. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. We have some eggplants on this other side. Let me show you guys, more spinach here. We have eggplants right here. I was even missing them out. And we already have some that have already grown. We are about to harvest as well. So these are the eggplants, this section. There's another section that other side for the eggplants. Then we have the lab lab 
for the animals. Oh my God, the goats really love the lab lab. It's behind there, looks like beans, that other section. That's where the lab lab is. Yeah, I think that is it for the crops. Enjoy. So guys, we are here at the farm now and I also have my co-director who has just joined us here. Say hello to them and also say something. Wow, well hello everybody. Uh, sorry I'm kind of late. I was actually out, you know, doing the rounds, talking to the staff because we haven't been here for like a day. Mm -hmm. So no, it's always good to be back at the farm. It's exactly. not exactly shining, but I'm just very happy and grateful to be here. And um, yeah, progress are being made. So exactly. if you look behind us, this is actually the chicken house. We actually brought you guys this update initially yeah, some months ago. Yeah. But you know, we were in Kenya. The mm -hmm. staff actually finished the project. Uh, the house got completed while we were still in Kenya looking for the sheep. And of course, you know, we wanted to let you guys know what's happening there. So like right now, we currently have our ducks there. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a temporary solution because the duck pond yeah. is actually going to get uh, dug up within the next week or so, maybe a few weeks from now. Yeah. And then the ducks are going to be a migrated, bigger one. a much bigger one, like an mm. actual where they're going to be living. Mm. So their, ho their housing, as well as a permanent pond for the ducks True. are going to be on the other side of the trench here. And then, but in the meantime, this house behind us could hold a fair amount of chicken. Yeah. Our target goal in this place is to at least have about 1,500 to 2,000. Yeah. There's, there's a reason for that. Well, we, we're thinking about, we still have some locals here, which we love. We love the locals, by but the we're way. also going to be, because we're looking to either do croilers or something that's a real dual purpose yeah, true. Uh, bird. We're not quite sure. Our Dr. Esther actually have some, mm -hmm. uh, some parent stock waiting for us. We're gonna go to her farm again, yeah, right? True. To actually pick those up. I think Tina's gonna go on that adventure with the staff here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would say within the next week or so. Yeah, true. Um, but I would say three weeks because the next ha structure has to be ready first. True. And then we, we have to disinfect, clean, and then migrate the, the birds here. chickens here. Yeah. 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 So the, what's the reason we're doing the chickens, <laughs> you might wanna ask? Mm -hmm. Well, the Value Farm family is actually, as a company, we are going to the value chain, right? Mm -hmm. You guys, those of you who follow us on social media know that last year, I would say about six, seven months ago, yeah, we actually did a ago. first offering to the public because we wanted everybody to actually test the meat from VF. Mm -hmm. And the response was so overwhelming. Yes. <laughs> we actually put a stop to it because we did not have, have enough. The, the, we wanted to have enough, but we also wanted to make sure we actually get the process down mm -hmm. because the quality we wanted to actually the quality of the meat is excellent everybody loved it but the delivery apparatus mm -hmm. we wanted to fine-tune that first because the last thing we want to do <laughs> is to actually take orders mm -hmm. and that we run out of meat or that we have so many orders that we can't deliver in a timely fashion that is true so we're gonna actually fix that so we're gonna be increasing the number of chickens we have on the premises mm -hmm. and we're also going to be making it available for you guys to order through contacting us on both uh, whatsapp our social media, social media, media platforms, platforms of course you'll be able to prepay and then your actual value farm meat box mm -hmm. will show up at your doorstep and oh we also have God. a store that we're going to be opening yeah true uh, if all goes well, we'll make that announcement really soon. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be in Kampala, so mm -hmm. you guys don't have to come all the way out to Lorero to come collect your meat. But we'll have a collection point in Kampala in a central location for you guys. So you can simply order. We slaughter that morning. That meat is going to be waiting for you. Or it could be delivered to your doorstep. We've been talking about this for some time. I know. <laughs> now it's actually coming true. It's coming so true. So now the, the Value Farm Association Mm -hmm. is alive and well mm -hmm. in fact this afternoon we're gonna actually be speaking with, with our potential person. member number eight mm -hmm. and he's also a pork producer like yeah. us right mm -hmm. but then we're also looking to interview folks that are serious that actually have cows mm -hmm. right that have the quality of cows that we need to inspect we need to make sure that these are like-minded partners who are serious about mm -hmm. farming mm -hmm. and who are serious about quality of their meat 
how humanely they treat the animals and whether or not they want to follow the rules that we're going to put in place to make sure that when we deliver a meat box to your doorstep, mm -hmm. you know that it was done under the purview and care of the Value Farm team here in Uganda. That's true. So, we're going to add actually, to that. Yeah, actually, some people have already reached out to us uh -huh. wanting to join the association. Yeah. But you know, it is a protocol, of course. Yeah. We shall definitely have meetings with you it's guys. It's a process. Yeah, we so have that to interview, we... we have to check out the farm, we have yeah. to make sure that uh, we have enough trained extension workers yeah, true. that will be able to go to these farms. It's not just like, oh, you're part of the association, mm. abuse your animals, you know, <laughs> treat them, whatever, and then we're gonna sell that meat to our customer. Absolutely yeah, not. Mm. Every single person that we're gonna bring into the group, you know, especially with the pork producers, we're actually gonna partner with these folks yes, exactly. to provide the piglets. So you know the quality and the genetics that you're getting on your table comes yeah. from this farm, right? Yeah. And vice versa. And of course, we're gonna make sure that our staff will literally be on premises. Exactly. So we'll be rotating the staff from farm to farm to make sure everything from the feeding to the animal welfare is being kept and looked after. Yeah. And of course, the way we make sure that everything is handling from buyer security to make sure we're not selling people any tainted meat. Mm. But I think one of my, one of the things that I wanted to assure you guys, mm -hmm. I don't know how many of you have ever had this experience. <laughs> and I've, I've probably told this story many times. Mm. One of the main reasons when I came to UG, because in the US, we have a lot of lamb, right? Yeah. But we don't have many places you can go purchase goat meat from. Okay. It just doesn't exist. As a matter of fact, true story. Mm -hmm. When I was living in Arizona, finding a place that I actually sold goat was like going to like a speakeasy bar. Wow. But there's no sign. You have you have to be invited by somebody to go to this little off the beaten path ranch. Okay. There's no there's no address listed. As a matter of fact, if you call these folks and say, hey, do you have any goat? Mm. They probably thought you think you're the police. I and they'll just hang up the phone and you'll mm. never <laughs> you'll never <laughs> speak to somebody at the ranch. Wow. So wow. I had to have somebody invite me. Mm. I needed to drive like three and a half hours away from where I was living. I lived in Phoenix, right? We had to go beyond Queens Creek, like deep in an area of Arizona I never even knew existed. Wow. Right? And then it was a ranch with no name. Eh? You just had to know how to get there. No <laughs> GPS coordinates. No GPS. And then when you got there, mm. you had the pleasure of paying whatever they wanted to charge you for a goat. So me and my friend Jean, we used to go. Mm. We used to actually split a goat down the middle, right? Mm -hmm. And that was the experience. So I love goat meat. So when I, came, when I first came to Uganda, guys, what happened was I actually wanted goat so bad. Mm -hmm. Because in the U.S., chicken is in abundance. Mm -hmm. You know, beef is in abundance. Mm -hmm. Pork is in abundance, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But goat. It's, it's always so hard to find. I love. So let me tell you something. When I came here, I went to the store mm -hmm. and I saw goat. I purchased so much goat meat. Mm -hmm. I went home. I seasoned the goat meat and I let it marinate it for at least two days, mm. thinking I'm going to have a feast during the NFL season. And you know what happened? Started cooking the goat. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting in the living room watching television and there was an unfamiliar stench. I started to take over the apartment where I was staying. Mm. And I asked myself, wait a minute, why does it What's smell like on? that? Mm. Why does it smell like goat urine all over my place? And then when I made my way to the kitchen, my heart steadily continued to break. And I realized that the, the goat meat that I had purchased mm. was a goat that was never castrated and the meat had gotten tainted. And mind you, I spent at least a good $50 buying goat meat. Yeah. And I had to literally throw it out, right? Never wanted to do such a thing, but the smell was so pungent. So it was so awful. I had to get rid of it. And my apartment smelled like that for no joke for at least two weeks. So from that experience, every time we would go to the supermarket, mm. especially for me to purchase meat, whenever you go, you would ask the people there, hey, is this a female goat or is this goat cashew? Yeah. They would never tell they, you. No one will tell you. It's a that is a secret truth. because mm. they want to sell you that tainted meat. Yeah, true. And so why am I saying all of this? Right, That's the reason I started to buy lamb. That's why I started buying sheep, right? Mm -hmm. Mutton, if you will. Because I never had that experience true. with purchasing lamb here in Uganda, right? So the reason this is such an important thing for me 
we don't want to have any of you guys ever go to that experience so rest assured when you guys purchase whether pork mm -hmm. or goat meat from value farm it's they will definitely be taint guaranteed on your meat you will never have that experience because the goats that we're gonna sell these are all goats that have already been pre-selected for meat production, meat production that had already had been castrated right identified at a very young age right yeah and then so by the time we actually take them for processing the meat is not tainted same mm. thing for the pork that you can expect from value farm that is so true. no taint meat guarantee from the value farm of group course. so when that meat shows up at your doorstep you can feel rest assured it's going to be of high quality no taint and you can eat it with joy and you'll thank us later wow i'm really <laughs> super excited about that because Sorry Everything about is the good. long story, but no, I had to No, 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 you I had, had to, to bring share. it down. It <laughs> exactly. A, it was such an awful experience. This is a, that was that experience, of yeah. course, that was really very terrible. And this happens to lots of people. Many people. Whereby someone just starts to hate goat meat because of that, you know, stench. And they feel like, oh, I just don't like the goat meat because of eating, you know, something that is horrible. Because it's just by chance, especially like now our butchers here. Yeah. You just go, they just cut for ah, you. You don't know where it is you. coming from. Yeah. So it's not easy to, for you to tell whether it is a male goat, whether it was a female They'll goat. They'll just, tell you. Yeah, they'll just tell you uh, which part do you want. <laughs> <laughs> just cut randomly anything. As long as there's meat, they'll tell you, okay, let's just give you some, some, yeah. some masav. <laughs> 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 Myself, I mean the fart, <laughs> but that's yeah. how it is here. But of course, the people who are going to join the association, I urge you guys to just be patient. I know some of you have already sent in messages. Mm -hmm. You can still call me so that we can arrange, so that we can come to your farm. We can, you know, schedule meetings so that we can be able to see how we can go forward with this. Because we really need you guys to be on board. We want more people. We want everyone to benefit as well. Because we don't want to leave our farmers behind. We don't want to, you know, we want to be together on this mission Absolutely. of the farm yeah. yes and the good thing is i just want to make sure we clear this caveat right mm. when it comes to the actual the association itself we actually are located in central uganda in the Lorero district mm. so we're looking for folks that are here both in the central but that doesn't mean if you're there out in Hoima, mm. my town of Masindi, uh -huh. all on those regions, you can't apply to be a part of the association because we want to partner with you people in different districts. But for now, we're going to focus on the central. The central region. And then, of course, from Masindi all the way out to Mbarara, Lukaya, all of that, those regions, as mm -hmm. far as Kabale, mm -hmm. we want to partner with people who really, truly believe in the mission mm. of providing a high quality meat, consistency, treating animals humanely yeah, true. and also coming together to actually uplift each other yeah, true. as an association right so we can actually do bigger things right yeah true so guys i think that is it for this video i know it is unexpected but these are some of the updates that we really wanted to bring up to you guys so that you can know what is actually happening and what we are planning as well because we are here to share everything with you guys and because you're part of this family so we don't want to be selfish we want to keep everything to ourselves and benefit a few people we want to share with the family that really watches our videos here so guys we really appreciate you guys so much thank you for watching if you've watched up to this moment Please. One moment, my partner. Mm. I know this video is already long, but mm. I have to say this, right? Mm -hmm. Guys, I have to tell you, lately, you know, as, as farmers, we also research, we also watch YouTube videos, we also consume other, con other content, right? I've come across quite a few videos where there are actual other farmers out there mm -hmm. trying to snipe at other smaller YouTubers, mm. you know, you know, listen, this is one community, mm, okay? Mm. When somebody's first getting started, you know, and they want to produce content, mm. it's okay. What we urge you guys to do, don't just turn on your camera, start producing content, and you don't research. Yeah, true. You know, you want to provide information, believe me, because not everybody's going to take the time to watch 5, 10, 15 different videos. If they land on your channel, and if you want to provide your experience, you can definitely provide your personal opinion. Yeah. But you should never try to pass your personal opinion as facts right yeah true especially when it comes to technical technical expertise, kind right? of, yeah so i just wanted to say that but again for all of you that are out there that want to get into farming believe me there could be no greater time than to get into this industry because i don't know the last time you guys checked the price of meat mm -hmm. on your shelves or at the supermarket or even at your local butcher in our village right now where we're located mm -hmm. and this is a remote place mm -hmm. there's a gentleman here who slaughters one goat per day yes 
And believe me, we usually get here very early in the morning. Mm -hmm. By the time we're leaving the farm, mm -hmm. whether we're here for three hours, four hours, if we're here for four hours, there's nothing left. Mm. If we come for a quick stop, quick staff meeting, quick checkup, and then we have to leave at times, by the time, if we're just here for three hours, by the time we're leaving, this might be like a half of a leg left. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> what surprised me, which was a very good surprise, because mm -hmm. even at the local village here where we are, he's selling his meat at six, 15 to 16,000 shillings a kilogram. per kilogram. And we're in a village where one would think the average person here could never afford such. Afford that, yeah. But guess what? Not only are these folks buying, he sells out every day. And I have a feeling if he had multiple goats to slaughter per day, mm -hmm. I he think would. he would sell out all day. That is true. Every single day. That is true. Multiple goats. So what does that tell you? Livestock is definitely the place to be. And if you don't like livestock, it's okay. Farming itself is a, is a large array of, it's a cornucopia. There's opportunities. There are different sections, different sectors for everybody. Mm -hmm. You definitely can find a space for yourself. The point is, we need you. Join the fray. You but, know. Yeah, and security is a big security, problem when it yeah. comes to food. That is so true. Guys, I think that is it for this video. But we appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so, so much. If you haven't already checked out our social media platforms, Instagram is Value Farm UG. Facebook is Value Farm. TikTok, Value Farm UG. Please go see the behind the scenes. Be part of the family. Go and learn something as well. Follow on Instagram. <laughs> go and follow us, guys. I will be posting there more content, of course, for you to also see small clips small reels there so that you can also learn from from them or just enjoy and also see what is happening here but we appreciate you guys so much tell a friend to tell a friend subscribe like and share till next time bye bye